masters of oration. They have to naturally gifted. And up to five o'clock, I'm sitting there in the grass waiting for my turn. And it came. So I stood up. I said, you know, from morning till now, we haven't come to a conclusion. How long is a woman to wait before she can remarry? I said, because you know why? We can't come to a conclusion. Because you're quoting the Old Testament and you're quoting the New Testament. You're quoting the New Testament and you're quoting the Old Testament. And the answers are not there. I said, you see, this book has it. This is the last testament. You have the Old Testament and you have the New Testament. We have the last testament. This is the last and final revelation of God. The last testament of Allah Bari Ta'ala to mankind. This book has the answer. And you don't have to think. You don't have to argue and debate. It gives you like laddu in the mouth, marshmallow. Turkish delight, halwa. Put in your mouth, just chew it. You don't have to think at all. Wrecking brains and arguing and debating, nothing. Open up. I said, you open at home. Now, in your Quran, when you have this, if you have this, you must get it. If you have one, Yusuf Ali, all the Qurans are the same. What the difference might be is, this is a new binding, new paper, you know, better paper, more compact. But otherwise, if you have a Yusuf Ali translation, page for page is the same. So you open the index, and you look for Idda, Idda. After divorce, you tell you, chapter so-and-so, verse so-and-so. Idda, after demise, chapter so-and-so, chapter 2, verse 234. Idda, after demise. You open it, and this is what you find. This is what you read there. I'm reading it to my audience there. You saw this. I'm reading from the Quran. I was reading from the Quran. So if any of you die, if any of you die, and they leave widows behind, they shall wait <coughs> concerning themselves four months and ten days. You have been guessing. They must wait concerning themselves four months and ten days. When they have fulfilled the term of waiting, the idda, when they have fulfilled the term, of waiting, there is no blame on you if they dispose themselves in a just and reasonable manner. And God is well acquainted with what you do. There is no blame on you if you make an offer of betrothal or hold it in your heart. There is no blame on you if you make an offer that you're going to marry her after the that is over or you keep it in your heart. There's no blame on you for that. Allah knows that you cherish them in your heart. But do not make a secret contract with them at certain terms honorable. No resolve on the, ma- on the tie of marriage till the term prescribed is fulfilled. You see, four months and ten days, anybody could have guessed. In a thousand guesses, anybody can say, somebody can come right. Is it not so? Because you guess as a three months, somebody says three months, ten days, somebody says four months, somebody says four months and ten days. If somebody can guess and get that, that figure. There's nothing miraculous about that. But the miraculous nature of that message is this. That this is not the work of Muhammad This is not his handiwork. Any clever man could have told you four months and ten days. You know, I guess. Your guess is as good as mine. Somebody could have guessed four months and ten days. So he guessed it. If he did. But no. That is not the miraculous part of this revelation. The revelation says, that when the man has passed away and you feel that you can give this woman protection in marriage, you can offer to her that, look, sister-in-law, Habib, look, when your term is over, I am prepared to take you in marriage. I will look after you and the children. Ah, she will be elated. She will be. You say, I have lost my looks, half a dozen children, all this liability, who is going to take me now? In the marriage market is not the same as what she was before marriage. So here comes along this old man of 66. <laughs> I'll look after you. <laughs> oh, she's elated. This old man is going to give me protection. <laughs> so I said, you happy? She's very happy. Said, Imam Sab, Imam Baker. Look, she's agreeable. Make our nikah. So she said, nikah min sunnati, pamun dhariba min sunnati, falaysa minni, au kama kal. Finish. Tied her up. Now, she's still passing through that emotional upset. And she says, hey, this old man, you know, he's beating his wife, starving the children, what is going to do to me? Too late, too late. Now to break up that marriage is hell for her. 
she said that emotionally she was in no position to make up her mind. So Allah knows his creation. He knows. So you, you're going to take unfair advantage over that moment. Says, look, you can suggest to her marriage. Or keep it in your heart. But don't tie her up. No marriage contract until four months and ten days are over. By that time, the woman has chance to think and to see. Says, mm, no, 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 no. I can do without, you know, marriage for some time. And inshallah, you know, some better man might come along and look after me and my children. She doesn't stand feet getting caught. Now, who knows that? The omnipotent, omniscient being. He knows our hearts and minds. He knows that you're going to take unfair advantage. That is not the work of Muhammad. Can you see? In every verse, every teaching of the Quran, when you analyze it, he said, this is not the work of man. This is not the work of man. This is not the work of man. With one verse, he killed four evils. One verse. There's not another religion on earth. No religion has succeeded to the extent that Islam has succeeded. One verse. Ya yuhal ladhina amanu O men of faith, inna mal khamru, the most certainly intoxicants, wal maisiru, and gambling, wal ansabu, and fortune telling, wal azlamu, and idol worship, rizm inna mal shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, fastani buhu la'allakum tuflifun, the shun such abomination that you may prosper. 